Now, not everything at the Democrats' convention this week went to plan, just like Tampa last week for the Republicans. The weather posed some problems for organisers. They didn't have to call anything off at the DNC, but they did have to hold President Obama's speech today inside instead of at a bigger outdoor arena. Thunderstorms and torrential downpours have made life very difficult for delegates and reporters all week. Celinda Lake is one of the most respected Democratic pollsters in the business, and she got a drenching on her way to talk with our own Lisa Miller. Selinda Lake, it's no surprise you've turned up like a drowned rat to this interview. You got absolutely saturated, didn't you? I did in a microclimate here. I thought, this has got to be bad TV to come in here and a bad image for our country. But in seriousness, the, the rain did affect Barack Obama and the plans for this open-air stadium. That was a bit of a PR disaster. It is. And you know what? I, now that I look this way, I'm glad he did uh, because I don't want our president looking like this. But, you know, the irony is America's in a drought. I think you have a drought as well. So it's kind of ironic that we're getting drenched in this microclimate. <laughs> Well, the media were absolutely fascinated by the change of venue, but does it actually make any difference on voting day? No, and I think it's kind of funny that the Republicans have taken the line that uh, we couldn't have filled the stadium. We clearly could have. I, for one, lost my pass, so uh, I think that it was a smart action because the real answer is thunder and lightning. And, you know, if you'd had you know, a quarter of the Democrats from Ohio electrocuted, that would be very good for our elections. Now, you've seen a convention or two in your time. How do you rate this one? <laughs> I think this is great. Uh, I think the logistics have been a little more challenging, but the speeches have been off the charts. And I think the uh, just the array of voices that have come forward, and I think that it's been very energizing to Democrats to go back out. And then we've had two of the best speeches of my lifetime, Michelle Obama and uh, Bill Clinton. Two of the best speeches in your lifetime? That's a big call. Yeah. I think that I've personally seen, that's right. They were phenomenal speeches and uh, just so authentic and two masters at work and two people delivering from the heart things that you could tell they really believed. What did the convention need to do and did it achieve it? I think it needed to do three things, and I think uh, two and a half are accomplished, and we'll see tonight if the third is done. So the first thing it needed to do was really lay out the administration's view of the record. I think the record got pretty muddled. It's hard times. It's always easier to complain than reward. And I think they laid out a very clear image of the difference that health care makes, the difference that equal pay makes for women, the difference that the auto bailouts made, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that part was accomplished. Second, the real battleground in this country right now is women voters. The Republicans really targeted women. I think the Democrats very effectively targeted them as well. And then the third piece was to give in a sense of what's the president's plan? What is the next step? What do you, Okay, this is what you did for us, but what are you going to do next? And Bill Clinton really laid the first half of that out, and I think the president will drive it home tonight. I want to nominate a man who's cool on the outside. but who burns for America on the inside. You had a pretty sold audience in there. It wasn't as if you had to convince too many people. So why was it important to be able to set out the plan, as you say Bill Clinton did? Oh, because what's really important, honestly, is uh, not the speeches and the people in the hall hearing them, although I think it's been great to energize Democrats and to give us our talking points. But 80% of the voters who are influenced by the convention are influenced by the news accounts afterwards. So all the reports today of what Bill Clinton said are going to be very important. Bill Clinton is wildly popular in this country, even more popular right now than the First Lady. Uh, so he's, And way more popular than the President. <laughs> well, way more popular than Romney uh, is really the point. And so uh, he's really able to authoritatively lay out, because the last good economic times we had were under Bill Clinton. The last time we had deficit reduction was under Bill Clinton. And so he can really lay out out what um, the alternatives are here, what the choices were, and it's very authoritative to American voters. The Republicans barely got a bounce out of their convention. Why would it be any different for the Democrats? Well, I don't know that we'll get that much bounce because these are the latest conventions we've ever had. Even Bill Clinton's own convention was much earlier, and so there were more undecided voters. I think what's key here is more laying the groundwork for the last 60 days of the campaign. So they got the lowest bounce in history. They also have the least popular VP in nine of the previous VPs. 
having said that, though, if we get a bounce, great. If we didn't, we laid the groundwork to take this thing home. So what do the Democrats need to do over the next 60 days if they are going to be victorious at the end of it all? Two things need to be done. The first is everybody's going to go to the ground. We have to get our voters out. We don't have a good law like you have that says everybody has to vote. Uh, so people think the first choice they make in this country is whether they vote or not. And uh, we have to get our vote out. The Republican base is much more energized than ours is. The Republican base is structurally more likely to turn out. They're more affluent. They're more married. They're more rooted in their communities, more likely to be registered to vote. And then a huge proportion of them are born-again Christians. So the Republicans see their voters every Sunday and maybe Wednesday too. And they've got uh, more money at the moment, the Republicans. And they've got more money, and they know how to do their ground games. So we have to get our vote out, and that's Latino voters, Asian American voters, African American voters, unmarried, young. We have to get them out to vote. Uh, the second thing is that last sliver of undecided voter is primarily an independent, blue-collar woman, about 55 years old, white, married, really worried about this economy. And I think we laid the groundwork for having a conversation with her about how we're going to make this economy better for her family. So what's the sense of where you're seeing the landscape at the moment then? Can he win it? Oh, I think uh, Barack Obama is likely to win it. I think the Republicans had a disaster of a convention, uh, frankly. And uh, I think Romney's speech was pretty mediocre. He said, I have a five-point plan to create 12 million jobs. Do you know the five points? I don't. Uh, and then Clint Eastwood really stepped on it. And more people remember Clint Eastwood from the convention now than remember Mitt Romney's speech. So uh, they had a disaster. And then I think they made a big mistake. I mean, he's off voting now and debate prep. I mean, He's been out of the public view for 10 days. Uh, so I, I think they had a disaster. But it's a close election in tough economic times. And as an incumbent, it's always hard to get reelected in tough economic times. Selena Lake, thank you very much. Thank you very much.